The Boy and the Heron is directed by the one and only Hayao Miyazaki and is reportedly his last film. This is not the first time I've said that when I reviewed The Wind Rises 10 years ago. That's what everyone was saying then too. So a young boy named Mojito, yearning for his mother, ventures into a world shared by the living and the dead. As he embarks on an epic journey with a grey heron as his guide. Mojito must uncover the secrets of this world and the truth about himself. The animation is absolutely astonishing. It was so wonderful to see a hand-drawn movie on the big screen, and part of me really hopes that its number one opening at the box office will make some people in Hollywood start thinking like maybe we could do some more hand-drawn features. I know that style is very time-consuming and difficult, but there's a sequence in this movie where Mojito has to cut open a fish. And what occurs, I haven't seen anything that visually arresting in an animation since Akira. And what's so great is that it's kind of played for a laugh. You could also look at the narrative that unfolds once Mojito journeys into this world as a bit of an allegory for Miyazaki's life and career. Not just for the loss of his mother or his father's job, but his career as the head of Studio Ghibli, as somebody who's brought all of these classic films to us. And I don't think that there is a definitive answer, so to speak. I think that similar to Oshi's Angel's Egg, you could read a lot into this movie and find many interpretations that mean something to you. Different emotions that are explored thoroughly. As well as autobiographical stories of Miyazaki that we might know and some that we might not know. Of course, it is in some way loosely inspired by the book How Do You Live? Mojito is gifted that book in the movie, but in so many ways, Miyazaki has made this his own film. Not everyone is going to like The Boy and the Heron or How Do You Live, because it is not exactly an easy movie. It is a rather difficult one that doesn't immediately give you all the answers and might be a little too confusing. But I do think that it is an extremely well-animated, gorgeous movie with an amazing Joe Hisaishi score. And I also think that it is a movie that people will talk about for many, many years for that very reason. It doesn't want to make this easy for you. It wants to present you with ideas, thoughts, and themes, and then let you take it your own way. And I think that that is really only the type of movie that a true master can make because they've already proven themselves. Which is why I'm blown away that it's number one at the box office, that it got great reviews from critics and people, and that it's doing as well as it is because this is by no means a movie that kind of takes you by the hand and says have fun. This is not necessarily a movie for kids either. This is a deeply mature film. Obviously Miyazaki's name has something to do with this, but I also think that people are excited to see something that is somewhat challenging. In typical Ghibli fashion. And so now they're going to make a film that is just as beautiful as their other works, but is going to make you sit back and think for a very long time. And I love that. So if you haven't seen the movie, I really think you should check it out. It's worth your time. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can subscribe this channel.